Isaiah chapter number 41. Begin reading in verse number 8. The Bible says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I've chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou, whom I've taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for a good Sunday school hour, and using Brother Scott to be a real blessing and a help. Lord, we're thankful for the good report over at the jail, even though they... Got a late start bringing the prisoners to them. We're thankful you used our folks and protected them over there. And Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the good singing, good congregational singing, good choir singing, good special singing. Lord, my heart's been blessed to be in the house of God this morning. Now, Lord, I realize this is a chaotic weekend. I realize a lot of folks have had a lot of things on their plate. And Lord, maybe even in body, they're little tired this morning. I pray you'd refresh them now. I pray that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. And I pray for the next few minutes that, Lord, the Word of God would become real in our minds and in our hearts. May we truly embrace it, and may we be obedient to it. I pray if there be any amongst us today who are unsaved, lost without Christ, Lord, they may be a good person, they're in church, but Lord, maybe they do not know you in the free pardon of sins. They've never came to a place where they repented and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray today would be that day of salvation for them. I pray, Lord, for that one that is struggling, that Lord, you would strengthen them. That one that may be in that difficult place, that God... You'd show up and help them. That Lord, that one that is seeking some answers uh, from thee, that today they'd find the answers. For you said, seek and ye shall find. Uh, well, whatever the need is from somebody's heart, I pray that, Lord, you would meet every need of every heart here today. Use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help these that are in the altar and those that have been in the altar. Uh, they might just be praising you for being so good to them. Or they may have... Uh, a particular need in their heart. Whatever it is, God bless them and help them. Uh, now help this uh, 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 unworthy preacher. We'll bless you, Father, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Starting in Isaiah chapter number 40, the prophet is prophesying uh, uh, concerning Israel after the captivity in Babylon. And from chapter 40 forward, he's dealing with their life uh, after the captivity. Uh, in this chapter, we find that the Lord uh, is speaking to them and he's uh, uh, revealing some things about himself and he's revealing some things about Israel. Uh, but in these particular verses, notice that he expressly speaks to them, uh, first of all, about being chosen. Look in verse number 8. Uh, he says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Uh, He's dealing with them about all the nations on the face of the earth. Uh, any people God could have chose to be his people, uh, but he chose uh, uh, the seed of Jacob and Abraham, uh, uh, the children of Israel, to be his chosen people. Uh, that means he selected them above all other people. Uh, by the way, the Jews are still his chosen people. Uh, and uh, where he did promise Abraham to those that blessed him and those that cursed him, uh, 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 God would bless those that blessed him, curse them that cursed him. Uh, I, I want to be on the right side of that thing. I'm for Israel. Uh, I'm not against Israel. Uh, I pray for the nation of Israel. I pray for the peace of Israel. Uh, I pray that Israel would be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, listen, just because 
because they're still God's chosen people uh, does not give them a right away to heaven. Uh, the only way that a Jew will get saved uh, and go to heaven is the same way we have to get saved. Uh, they've got to repent of their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but they are uh, God's chosen people. We see that God reminds them that. He deals with them about being chosen. But he also deals with them about being called. Look at verse number 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof. He called them. Uh, that means he summoned them. He invoked them to a purpose. Uh, uh, can I say that? Every child of God that is saved, uh, 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 you have been called of God or summoned of God to do something. Uh, God didn't save you to just sit around and wait for Him to take you to heaven. Uh, we all have a job to do in Christ. Uh, we all have a general call to be a witness uh, and be light uh, and to take the gospel to a lost and dying world. Uh, but then God has uh, some specific callings uh, where He'll call a man to the ministry, call a man to preach, uh, call a man to pastor, call a man to be a missionary. Uh, uh, but we all have a call on our life if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we see they were chosen. He talks to them about that. He talks to them about being called. Uh, but he also uh, uh, speaks with them to comfort them. Look in verse number 10. He says, Fear thou not. Now, prior to chapter 40, Isaiah is prophesying, as did Jeremiah, as did many of the minor prophets, that they were going to captivity because they failed to repent and get right with God. Jeremiah expressly told them to uh, uh, walk in the old paths. That's the good way. And you'll find rest for your souls. They said, we will not walk therein. And can I say, uh, as Brother Jeremy brought out in Sunday school, they were a stiff-necked people. Uh, they had hardness of heart. Uh, they served their idols, and they served their gods, and they were not going to give them up for the true and living God. Uh, and therefore, uh, in order to break them, God sent them into captivity for 70 years. Well, he dealt with all of that prior to this. And now he wants to reassure them. And can I say, sometimes as God's children, we get sideways. And God will warn us, and God will woo us, and God will deal with us. But if we keep heading down the direction we're headed down, He, he will get out His chastening rod. He will chasten us. But He always reassures us that we're His children. Can I say, uh, God does not chasten the devil's children. He only chastens his own. And if, you're with, if you can live in sin and you're without chastisement, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, you're a bastard, not a son. But here he reassures them. He says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Uh, he comforts them by letting them know... Uh, 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 that he will be present. Uh, he said again in verse number 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Uh, he also comforts them uh, uh, by letting them know uh, about his person. Uh, he says, Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. What a blessing. Uh, 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 when you're troubled, you can go to this verse and it'll help you. Uh, he's with us. Uh, he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, and he is our God. We've been in great in his palm. Uh, uh, we're in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand, and no man can pluck us out of his hand. Uh, and he's still on the throne, and he is our God today. Uh, but he also comforts them with, with a promise. Look again at verse number 10. He said, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. As Brother Scott brought out in Sunday school, a lot of times we're trying to figure it out when we're in a difficult place or a difficult period instead of praying the Lord's the one that'll help us he's the only one can help us because without him we can do nothing but I'm interested in verse number 8 this morning look what it says but thou Israel art my servant Jacob, Jacob whom I've chosen the seed of Abraham my friend 
Here God specifically refers to Abraham, a man of faith, as his friend. James wrote about it in James 2.23. He said, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You also find it in Second Chronicles, where it refers to him as the friend of God. Can I say? I'm glad that Abraham is known as the friend of God, but I'm more glad to know that Jesus is my friend. Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus knows all about you. Someone once said, for somebody to be a true friend, they must know all your good traits and all your bad traits, and they still choose to be a friend. I believe as Abraham Lincoln said, that if you lived your whole life, and at the end of your life you have five true friends, you're a blessed man. Hmm? But Jesus knows more than your good traits and your bad traits. He knows all your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. Uh, he knows the intents of your heart. Uh, he knows their thoughts. He knows all about you. And he's still your friend. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Can I say this about Jesus? Uh, he's known or was known in his ministry as the friend of publicans and sinners. Can I say, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Amen. Can I say, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus wasn't afraid to eat with sinners. Amen. Wasn't afraid to hang out with sinners. Drove the Jews absolutely crazy. I'm talking about the religious crowd. Uh, absolutely crazy. They washed their hands and they kept themselves clean and they had all these little rituals they did uh, and they would have never been caught dead in the house of a sinner, a known publican, a known sinner. Uh, but there's Jesus just sitting there eating with them, fellowshipping with them. Uh, and that was one of the indictments that they had against him. Uh, hey, uh, can I say the religious crowd still has an indictment that Jesus hangs out with folks like you and I. Yeah, I'm glad he loves sinners, aren't you? He's not only a friend of stickers closer than a brother, and he's not only a friend of sinners and publicans, but can I say this? Jesus was the one who laid down his life for his friends. He bled and died that you and I could have a relationship with him. He paid our sin debt. Now this says, Abraham, my friend... James said that Abraham was called the friend of God. We know that Jesus is a friend to us. Here's what I want to preach on. I want to preach on this thought. Are you his friend? Said Abraham, my friend. That's what God said. Now we know all that Jesus is to us. But are you and I his friend? Hmm. Jesus said this in John 15, 14, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Can I say there are three specific things that God has commanded if we're going to be Jesus' friend? Can I say that first of all, you've got to be saved from your wickedness. And sinners... Lost in their sin cannot be a true friend of Jesus. Jesus is righteous. Jesus is holy. Uh, Jesus died for your sins. Uh, and you are not doing what he commanded you because he commanded men everywhere to repent. Uh, and unless you repent and trust in him as your Lord and Savior, you cannot be a friend to him. You've got to be saved from your wickedness. Can I say, in order to be a friend, you cannot be a friend of Jesus unless you're submissive to his will. How can you keep his commandments if you're not submissive? If you say, well, I, I'll keep this part of it, but I won't keep that part of it. Well, you're not, you're not his friend. You're not keeping his commandments. We're to keep all of it. Why? Why should I do all those things that the Bible said? Because you was lost in your sins. You was on the auction block of sin. There was nobody could pay your sin debt. The devil owned you. He had you chained to your sin. There was no hope with uh, for you. You was helpless. You was aimless. You was going to live a life of depravity, and you was going to die and go to hell. But one day Jesus came by, and Jesus said, I'll pay you sin. 
send it. And he took your sin upon himself. And he took all the handwriting of ordinances of the law and he nailed them to his cross so he could break the bondage of your sin. So he could break the power of Satan and the power of hell. And he died. He lived, buried, and died according to the scriptures. I was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He conquered your sin. And friend, he came by and said, I'll pay your sin debt. All you got to do is trust me, believe on me, and let me be the Lord of your life. And when you got born again, you entered into a contract with the Lord. He took away your sin, and all he asked for was your life, because your life is no longer your own. You've been bought by a price. By the way, your life wasn't your own when you was lost. You belong to the God of this world. The devil owns you. He controlled you. He didn't let you know that, and you wasn't bothered by that because he didn't want you to be bothered by that. As a matter of fact, he didn't start really bothering you until you got born again because he doesn't want you to tell anybody else what the Lord did for you. But can I say... Mm, all he asks is for your life. Mm, what a blessing. We traded hell for heaven and the glory of God. And all I got to do is live by the best of my ability the way God tells me to live. Just be submissive. What's our word rule around here? Mind the Lord. Can I say that's not only when we're in church. We're to mind Him all the time. Mm, you can't be His friend if you're not submissive to His will. You're not saved from your wickedness. And you cannot be his friend without being scriptural in your walk. Can I say the word of God is the absolute final authority for our lives. And we're to walk by faith according to the scriptures. If God said thou shalt, you better. If he said thou shalt not, you better not. But we need to walk according to the Scriptures. Listen, uh, I'm sick and tired up to hear about preachers and their rules. I don't care what a preacher's rule is. What's Jesus' rule? Uh, 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 and just walk scripturally. Uh, and if you do, you can be Jesus' friend. But let me give you some things about a, a true friend. And then you can answer the question, are you Jesus' friend? Hmm? Can I say that a true friend is one you can confide in can I say you can confide in your true friend everything you can confide in your true friend all your fantasies all your hopes and dreams did you ever have a hope or dream brother Charlie hoped that he would retire and get that Chevelle uh, got that thing running uh I know when he drives it to church, my, every book of my bookshelves in my office rattle off, you know. Uh, uh. Miss Rhonda's car's got that smooth, mean sound. Brother Charlie's car has that angry, mean sound. You know, there's a difference. Uh. But can I say, you can confide in a true friend all your hopes and your dreams. You've got to be careful. Because, Brother Donald, if they're not a true friend, they're going to think you're crazy. And they're going to tell everybody else you're crazy. But you can confide in a true friend. Not only all your fantasies, you can confide in your true friend, your fancies. The things you like and your things you don't like. Huh? I'll never forget, Brother Ray. I had a friend and I was invited to dinner. And his mother put tea right in front of me. I don't like tea. There ain't enough sugar in Grenada for me to like tea. You know what I'm saying? But I drank it. Huh? Didn't want to upset her or the apple cart or anything. But she really wasn't a friend. She wasn't somebody to say, hey, I don't like tea. Got water? You got anything? You can, I, I'll lick the sweat off somebody's toes before I drink that tea. You know what I'm saying? Not a tea drinker. Hmm? Just not. I'll never forget when I went to cardiologist, he said, why do you drink so much Coke, sodas? I said, for the caffeine. 
He drink, she said, drink coffee or tea. He said, no. Why not? I said, it tastes horrible. I said, if I had to put what I needed to put in there and make it taste good, you'd have me off of that for everything I put in there. Uh, I will say, Miss Toey sent me some tea. I don't know what that tea was. It, it tastes like an orange fudgesicle thing. One of them orange and cream sickles. I mean, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't a tea that some of you all drink. Uh, that was some pretty good stuff. What's it called? Thai tea. Thai tea. Well, it was good. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You can confide your fancies, those things you like and those things you dislike. Hmm? Can I say, a true friend, you can confide in your fears. Now, you, you can take that red cape off, fellas. There's something you're afraid of. Definitely snakes. Whoever said that? Yeah, man. I said something about that Sunday morning down there when I was preaching. Sunday night, the preacher looked in the pool. I thought, oh, no, they put some kind of snake thing in there. Because I got a guy that's a taxidermist. And I'm thinking, if I open that and there's a fake rattlesnake or something there, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> so I didn't open it. Because huh? he looked at it, looked at the song later like, whoa, what's in there? So I didn't look in it. But a true friend, you can confide your fears in. Can I say a true friend, you can f hide your hidden facts, your secrets. Can I say a true friend, you can even confide in the things that you're most fondest of, your loves. Can I say that Jesus has confided in us all those things. He's let us know everything about Him. Uh, my dear friends, can you confide in Him those things? Uh, Hey, if there's nobody else you can talk to, you ought to be able to talk to Jesus. Uh, you ought to be able to confide him. By the way, he already knows them. Uh, but there's something about admitting those things to him. Uh, let him know your fears. Let him know your, your loves. Let him know those things you dream and hope for. Uh, it's okay to confide in him. Are you a friend to him? And I say this, a true friend is one you congregate with. One you want to spend time with. Hmm? it's always a blessing when I get to go to meetings where I got friends that I don't see very often and I get to see them you know it's one thing talking on phones another thing to see them hug their neck say it's good to see you that's a blessing hmm, can I say I, I always like spending time with friends I don't like spending time with my enemies I don't like spending time with folks that aren't like me. You know, folks that are other denominations, other flavors, whatever, that's just not my crowd. But I like my friends. Why wouldn't we want to congregate with Jesus? If he's our friend, we want to hang out with him. You ought to want to talk with him, spend time with him every day, but you certainly ought to want to meet with him in his house. Can I say this? A true friend is one you can count on. Listen, we can count on Jesus no matter what. When we're in the valley or when you're on the mountaintop, He'll be there with you, huh? Paul said, all men forsook me, nevertheless the Lord stood by me. Uh, we can count on Jesus. Can Jesus count on us? If He's got a particular job that needs to be done, can He count on you to get involved, to get it, make it happen? Or does he say, I ah, no. They'll start out good, but they'll burn out quick. You better call on this one over here. Jesus ought to know he can count on you. Yeah. By the way, that's not in word. It's easy to say, I'll be there. Amen. It's proven with your life. Lord, you can count on me. I'm there. No matter what, Lord, I'm there. You can count on me. Yeah. Hmm? Are you a friend to him? Can I say a true friend's one you cherish? One you love? Hmm. We know he loves us with an everlasting love. But do we really love him? Is he uh, first on our list? 
or is he down the list? Hmm. Are you a friend to him? How much do you show him you love him? You know, if you're not careful, you'd be married a long time, Brother Scott, like you are to Miss Anesta. You'll get so busy, you'll not take time to let her know you love her. You'll not take time to show her you love her. Hmm? I'm picking on you because she's not here. Because hmm? huh? if she was here, we'd find out the truth. Hmm? You spend more time with Uriah than her, huh? We'd find out all that stuff. Uh, it's one thing to tell them you love them. It's another thing to show them. And sometimes you do things out of the ordinary to prove you love them. Do we do that with Jesus? Hmm? Can I say a true friend's one that you're close to? Over the years, I don't know how many conversations Brother Greg Phillips and I have had over everything from the ministry to family to just things in general. We're close. That's what happens with the true friend. True friend you can talk to and you can get close to and you appreciate them and what they're doing in their life and their family. How close are you to Jesus? You know, the Bible does say draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Right. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. How much do we make a concentrated effort to draw closer to the Lord? Can I say your flesh, the world, and the devil will fight every facet of you trying to get close to God? You go to read the Word of God, next thing you know, your mind's wandering over here somewhere. You go to pray, and all of a sudden the devil puts some wicked thought in your mind while you're praying. And I say you can make a concentrated effort. I'm going to do this this week, or I'm going to take part in this this week. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to, and the, the, every element, including your very flesh, will fight everything that there is to you doing those things. And I promise you, if you make up your mind, you're going to get closer to Jesus. The devil, your flesh, and the world will fight you. Huh? But I got good news. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We already have the victory in Christ. Yeah, you got to wade through some stuff, but you can get close to him. Hmm? It amazes me in reading the scriptures that the night of what's called the Last Supper, when Jesus announces one's going to betray him, John's over there with his head on the bosom of the Lord. Every one of them said, Lord, is it I except John? Why? Because he was close to him. Matter of fact, Peter finally said, Hey, John, ask him who it is. And he said, Lord, who is it? Because he knew he wouldn't be the one because he was close. When Jesus was suspended between heaven and earth on the cross, who was there? John. John was known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, John was the only disciple or apostle that died a natural death. Uh, why? Because John was close to the Lord. Are we close to him? A true friend is one you champion. In other words, you defend or advocate for. Can I say every day he advocates for you and I before the throne of God. Every day uh, he is willing to defend us when the accuser of the brethren comes uh, and begins to uh, uh, mock our testimony and accuse us uh, of faults and failures. But we have a mediator, we have an advocate uh, at the right hand of the throne of God, the Lord Jesus himself. Uh, he is our advocate, but do we champion him in this world? Do we take up for him? When others mocking and cursing, we we'll make a stand for him, regardless of the fallout. A real friend's one you champion. Hmm? Listen, I've said this before. Family members can sometimes squabble, but you don't want to mess with the family because they all turn on you. There's something about being family. Blood, blood is thicker than water. 
And listen, we're not a perfect church. You're not a perfect church because you don't have a perfect pastor. And there's few of you that don't have a halo yet. We're not a perfect church. We have our faults. We have our failures. We have our shortcomings. But there better than be nobody out there talk about Emmanuel Baptist Church in front of me. Because I love our church. Church been good to me. I'll fight for our church. Huh? Huh? I'll have no problem popping somebody in the nose over our church. Huh? I'll be down there at the jail ministry inside. <laughs> but shouldn't we champion for the Lord like that? Oh, he's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my friend that's sticking closer to brother. I should advocate for him. Can I say this? A true friend is one you'll carry out their wishes. Now sometimes, Brother Bob, your family won't carry out your wishes. Because they love you and they're emotionally attached to you and you may have a wish and they can't bring themselves to do it. But a true friend will. True friend, you could you can go to Brother Ed's Brother Ed, if something ever happens to me, I want this done. There's he loves you, he's emotionally attached to you, but he's a true friend and he's going to carry out your wishes. He'll do that. You're a good man, Ed. Uh, I'm sorry you're going before him, but, you know. <laughs> Let's all just go into rapture. How about that? Yeah. See, a true friend is all these attributes and so many more. And we can say the Lord Jesus is all those things to us. Amen. But are we his friend? No. Puritan writer Thomas Brooks said this, the spiritual good of a man consists in this, that a man hath friendship with God, and consequently that he lives for him, to him, with him, and in him. He lives for him by consent, to him by conversation, with him by communion, and in him by contentation, which means satisfaction, you're satisfied in him. Thomas Brooks, nearly 400 years ago, said that the spiritual good of a man consists in this, your friendship with God. All of our righteousness is filthy rags. Any good in us comes from our friendship with God. Let me ask you this. Are you Jesus' friend? I know he's our friend. But what kind of friend are we to him? Are you Jesus' friend? The old hymn writer wrote, I'll be a friend of Jesus. Will you? You can be. He desires you to be. But will you and are you? Are you his friend? You say, he's my Savior. Wonderful. He's my Lord, even more wonderful. But are you his friend? If you study the life of Christ when he walked on earth, didn't have many friends. Had some acquaintances. And one he called friend who kissed him on the cheek and then betrayed him. I don't want to be that kind of friend to Jesus. Are you a friend to Jesus? We've got a purpose in our heart every day to make certain that Jesus knows we're his friend. If you're here today and you don't know him, we'd love to introduce you to him. But if you're here today and you know him, you ought to revolve your life around the fact am I being a good friend to Jesus? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song. While he comes and gets a song, God spoke to your heart, the altar's open. I just want to be his friend. Somebody can count on, somebody can confide in. 
I want to be his friend because he's been a good friend to me for 49 years. Amen. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song of invitation. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Bless the invitation. Speak to hearts. Save that one nearest hell. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.